Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to be looking at Spasm, an underground comic from 1973, written and drawn by Jeffrey Catherine Jones. At the time, she was known as Jeff Jones. This was uh, many years before uh, she changed her gender and changed her name. Um, this was published by Last Gasp. I love that uh, Jones actually... Uh, redrew their logo in her own inimitable style beautiful painting here just really nice i i never knew this uh, until today i was looking up uh jones on the internet and i guess frank frazetta himself said that jones was the best living painter so i can't really argue with him she's really good love this inside front cover speaking of frazetta um, definitely not as brawny as a Frazetta character, but um, just the uh, body language really reminds me of Frazetta. Kind of exaggerated. We have a nice little front piece here. Beautiful art. Such good design. It's no wonder she became a painter. She pretty much gave up comics and I guess the probably by the late 70s, early 80s, she wasn't really doing any comics and just became a fine art painter. This is almost like a, it could have been an idol strip. That was the strip that uh, Jones had in the National Lampoon all through the early 70s. Coincidence. And we see these two beautiful women. And this is really dumb. <laughs> Unless I have a dumb, uh, I'm too dumb to get it. But uh, this blonde woman says, guess what I found? Come on, guess. A nut. And the other woman says, you found a nut? What a coincidence. Why? What did you find? Nothing. <laughs> so I don't know. I uh, just reread this a bunch of times. Like, am I missing something here? I don't know if I am. But, you know, who really cares? Look at this panel alone. That is just luscious. This one too, incredible. This one's called Spirit of 76. We see this guy, his eye opens and he looks like he's dressed in colonial garb, like a soldier. And he says, I can't move. These vines have grown over me. The captions are very poetic. And the wind whispered to him the answer, and he strained to hear a million, million backs of a million, million leaves. But he can't remember who he was. Doesn't know why he can't move. I like this watercolor art. I assume it is. I'm not an artist, but it looks like it is really nice. Or maybe it's just ink wash, I don't know. Whatever it is, it's great. The universe danced around him, the ground was alive, and the trees, the world crawled in the sun, and in the sky there moved great white and thunder mountains. He says, how long have I been here? Wait, what is that? And uh, we see these two kids dressed in like, you know, early 70s garb, wearing blue jeans and stuff. And he thinks, a thought balloon, he says, help me. And... Uh, the little boy says, hey, look, I found this old canteen. And then he looks right over at him. And the soldier says, they see me. Thank God. And the little girl says, wow, look at the bones. <laughs> so that was just his ghost. That's an amazingly drawn skeleton. That's a good one. This one is called Saved. Really slick drawings. So this woman is like, we don't know how or why, but she's marooned out in space. She's got this like, um, it's called a survivor pack. And basically it'll keep her alive for 10 years. But she's like, eternity is way longer than 10 years. I'm, I'm going to go insane. It's, it's This is going to be hell on earth. Just to be alive floating in space all by myself for 10 years. And then she sees another 
figure with a survivor pack floating towards her. Like the chances are infinitesimal. And right when the figure is uh, passing by her, she turns, she reaches out and turns his helmet. And the guy's been dead for a long time, but preserved kind of, not entirely, but she screams. And then she takes her helmet off. She's a, uh, her hands went to her helmet and her life touched the velocity of escape. Young forever. Because not only is she going to die, but all the symbiotic bacteria in her, in her system, the bacteria that had lived to feed on the flesh of her, well, eventually. She had strangely won, but no one was there to applaud. So it's kind of like that die young, stay pretty. She'll just be untouched floating through space. Really good drawings. These stories are all over the map. Like some are so like slick and like well drawn. And then some are really rough. Like he's just sketching really quick. This is called The Enemy. We see this old woman who lives in a house. She never goes out because she hates the cold. I guess uh, someone she loved once was killed by the cold. But one day someone comes into her house. I would swear that was Bernie Wrightson. I don't know if maybe he was helping him out that day when they were hanging out, or uh, he'd just been hanging out with Bernie Wrightson so much he started to pick up some things from him. So the guy, I guess, was trying to come up the stairs and she threw a chair at him and it broke his leg so he couldn't crawl up the stairs. But she couldn't get downstairs where her food was waiting on the porch. I guess she, got, she had uh, regular deliveries. She also couldn't get wood for her stove, so. And I don't quite understand this. She takes a book and smashes the window. And then she sits and waits for the moaning downstairs to finally die out. And then she went out. Look at this, a totally different style. Loose. This butterfly lady tells it comes up to another butterfly lady. She says, come fly with me. And the the other one says, I, I can't fly. You've got wings, come on. She says, my chairs are too heavy. This is the chair I rest in. That's the chair I sit in when I love. And that's the one I use when I hate. That's my chair for thinking. That's, my, that's for when I'm learning. That's for laughing and that's for crying. So she just has all these chairs and she's kind of, encumbered by them. I used to have lots more chairs, but I was stronger then. Man, this art is so nice. So she says, come on, leave those chairs, follow me. And the woman does, she flies up and she's kind of scared. She says, it's so high. And then when the other one turns around, she's all saying, see, you can, you and the woman's back sitting in her chair, all scared. This one is what I was, an uh, example of what I was talking about. This is so loose. Look at this, the spaceship going towards this planet. It's like just a few quick lines. It's called Deja Vu. This is pretty dumb. This is like a, one of those like, stories that would be an epic illustrated, you know? Like if you were smoking a joint, maybe it would seem profound or something. This guy's uh, coming down on this planet. He felt like he's... He felt like he's been here before. Like this is happening again. Basically, he's having a feeling of deja vu. He lands on the planet, and he can't uh, shake this feeling of recognition, even though this is an uncharted planet. Obviously, he's never, no, no one's ever been there, let alone him. And then the first page is just... Sorry, the last page is just like the first. You know, showing, oh, look, he's in a loop. It's deja vu. Yeah. There's another one, a kind of like quizzical one, the bridge. And I guess this woman uh, practically lives on this bridge. She hangs out there all the time. She loves to take her clothes off at night and dance under the stars.
Joan says, it was a thing between the lines, all things beyond anticipation and promise. It was her bridge and it was all bridges. Man, so nice. And I guess one night, someone joined her on the bridge and she had loved beneath a rainbow. And so I guess her and this guy went under this bridge and made love. And I guess one night there was a horrible thunderstorm and the lightning cracked the bridge. And she says, they would build a br new bridge now, one that would be strong and big. It would be their bridge and would certainly be a lot easier to cross for them. And we see her now, she's an old woman. Probably every day of her life, she's uh, been mourning the loss of that bridge. This one's called Guarantee. And uh, man, look at this illustration. Uh, we see this woman cowering and she's hear, uh, she hears sirens getting closer. We see these two guys kind of like cops, future cops, <laughs> kind of silly outfits, but um, this one guy's like, we got her. And he says, you think, you're sure this thing's moral? The other guy says, the law's the law. You saw the contract. And we see the woman, we hear the thumping of her heart. The other guy says, come on, we've got to get closer so the interrupter can do its job. One of them says she should never have run. She should never have lied. She should never have had the operation under premeditated criminal pretense. And we see the woman double over in pain, clutching her chest. And she falls. And ethically, the artificial heart only had a lifetime guarantee. Another kind of like story that would be in a Sky Walled magazine or maybe a Warren. But man, that drawn... Here's another one of the loose ones. Death. And we see this guy trudging through the cold. And death approaches. Or at least a figure that looks very much like death. And the the Alan Moore looking guy says, I didn't expect you here now. And death says, I'm always here now. He says, who do you think I am? And the guy says, you're death, of course. Look at your hands. And his hands are getting older. He's like, you're taking my life away. Stop it. He asks him, how long do you think you've been here? And the guy's kind of like, I've missed something. I, I don't know what's going on. Listen, the stars are moving. But I can't hear the stars. <laughs> he really looks like Alan Moore there. Here too. Everything's changing. The world ends a million times a day and never ends at all. And then he kind of fades away. And the Alan Moore guy says, you're not death. I've missed some things, but I haven't missed at all. And then we see him dead. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Jones was definitely uh, marching to the beat of a different drummer. Kind of uh, above my head. A little vague, a little obtuse. Really nice little drawing here. Looks like some zombie or something. And a pretty nice back cover of this woman floating in space in a pyramid, kissing a skull. Really like the colors here. This is definitely not his finest work. I have a feeling this is like some early painting in his career. But not this one. This front cover is gold. Look at that. Ah, uh, the colors, so amazing. So there you have it. Spasm by Jeffrey Catherine Jones. I think this is the only underground comic she did. Uh, she did some stories here and there, I, I believe, in some comics. But Last Gasp gave her her own collection. And uh, kind of a curiosity. I'd never even heard of this until I found it at a store like five years ago. And I was like, wow. 
because I love Jeffrey Catherine Jones. Ever since I was a kid, I read her in National Lampoon. I read her in Heavy Metal all through my childhood. And uh, every now and then, I'd see her in something like a, a Skywald magazine or some reprint fanzine. So I hope you guys liked it. And uh, I hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pettix Academy of Comic Book Studies.